policy. Well, Indiana relies on coal for 75% of its power. Together, coal mines and coal burning power plants have a $750 million impact on the economy, but Indiana is working to modernize its energy sector. And as Brock Turner reports in our two-part series on coal, that transition could displace workers and strain local communities. Passed away and, and, uh... She was in, in Tim Abrams remembers when Hoosier Energy's Miram Generating Station in Sullivan County first opened. As a collector, he has relics of those early days in a cabinet at his home near Indiana's border with Illinois not far from the Wabash River. They called them flickers, but uh, this one here is a dollar, and that's 50 cents. And what you did was is you, would, uh, you had to buy from their company store. Abrams works at the Miram plant, but he's not only worried about his personal future. He's the president of the Sullivan County Council and knows that the Miram plant is one of the biggest drivers of the local economy. When we lose Hoosier Energy, we're going to lose a lot of tax base, and uh, that's going to affect the county. Uh, so those things there, I'll, I'll have to be looking at all that too. Abrams hopes to convince Hoosier Energy to keep the plant open. He cites millions of dollars the company recently invested in the facility's infrastructure, along with concerns over what officials will do if the demand for power increases. Currently, natural gas prices are at historic lows, and it burns cleaner than coal. Renewable prices also continue to drop, but they're not as reliable, and storing that energy can be difficult. I can believe that this country uh, needs to go to a, a clean clean environment, I can believe that. But uh, if you want to bring the industrial machine back to this country, you're going to need coal-fired plants. Abrams and others closely associated with the industry say they understand the need for cleaner energy generation. But many, like Kevin Hills, the mining program director at Vincent's University, say it will take time to develop more efficient and cleaner energy sources. The alternative energy has always got a place. But yeah, I think there's a misconception about uh, uh, what a coal miner really is now compared to what he was 50, 75 years ago. Vincent's recently invested $2 million in a mining training center. Today, miners from across the state and the region are completing certification classes. Nah, that's a little bit too late because that ground's given if it shifts, right? I should back up. In addition to the miners themselves, communities and the people in them rely on coal for their well-being. You take a chunk of that away, you're going to have people that are going to be hurting because they put everything into it they have with that job. I mean, they got kids in college, they got house payments, car payments, things like that. So you have to, you're going to have to start all over again. And when you're in your 40s and your 50s, it's pretty tough. Not, not everybody can code. And Abrams agrees. The small communities is left as being left behind. If you go through these little towns, the brick and mortar buildings, is, a lot of them is empty. Uh, and they tell you that everything's better, uh, and maybe they are. That's something local governments are saddled with. Clint Lamb is the mayor of Sullivan, a town of less than 4,500 people just north of the Miram plant. The reality is this. Hoosier Energy went online in 1982. And we were told in 1982 that it was going to be a 30-year plant. We kind of had a heads up. Republican legislators have abandoned free market tendencies and tried to slow these closures by forcing energy companies to keep coal in their portfolios longer. That's something a lot of coal executives support, but economists and energy companies say it would lead to higher prices for consumers. Well, you're not just getting rid of the coal people, you're getting rid of the lady who works in the dentist's office, the lady who sells the tennis shoes. You're killing the communities. While our hearts go out to the coal miners that are affected and the folks at Hoosier Energy, the reality is uh, this isn't as much of a political issue as it is an economic issue. It, it's the entire world, right? It's alternative uh, energy sources for one, but automation plays a role here as well. Lamb hopes to take a different approach to economic development by investing in infrastructure projects and physical improvements to his town. Projects like accessible sidewalks, a civic center, and apartments on the town square are bringing more people to Sullivan. Some of those investments relied on tax money coal provided, but Lamb says his focus remains on what is in his control. 
I would say a lot of mayors in small towns in, in Indiana, like they would rather try and get that Honda plant or, or you name, insert manufacturer here. So And the rest of the other 3,000 counties in America. I hope in the year 2050, they're saying, wow, you know, they were dealt a bad hand. It was unfortunate. Those coal miners lost their jobs. Hoosier Energy had to shut it down. But you know what? That was the group that took the bull by the horns, and they invested in, in, in our community. And we're proud of that. I don't want to wait another 30 years and just hope something good happens. You've got to make it happen, and you've got to invest in yourself. Meanwhile, Abrams is hoping something changes before the plant closes for good at the end of 2023. But if it comes to that, he has no plans to leave. He spent his entire life and raised a family here. I'm optimistic, I guess. I'm, I, I, uh, I, I'm just going to keep working. I hope for the best. And, and, uh, but I, I'm not going to go anywhere. This is my home. For Indiana News Desk, I'm Brock Turner. When Miram closes in three years, the 7,000 acre site will most likely be reused. Hoosier Energy has said it plans to work with state and local economic development officials to market portions of the Miram property for industrial development. Officials say they're also considering renewable energy generation or even perhaps the sale of the plant.